I released a video on Monday talking about my favorite upcoming PC handhelds. And I mentioned the new Ryzen AI 300 chips look to be a truly next generation leap. So I decided to make a video discussing what that actually looks like. What are the numbers? What are my thoughts and expectations for these future handhelds? So let's just jump right into this. AMD has been behind all of the most impressive portable gaming devices. They're behind the Steam Deck, the RG Ally, and the RG Ally X, which is the most powerful PC handheld out right now. And basically, any PC handheld worth anything is probably running AMD processors. And that's because AMD makes both processors and graphics cards, allowing them to make pretty powerful onboard graphics. Not only are these APUs powerful, but they're also very efficient, allowing for these devices to be made in the first place. The whole reason these things are finally being able to become a real actual product segment is thanks to the power efficiency these chips have. Because typically what you see in standard gaming laptops and computers is a entirely separate GPU. And now with how powerful these new integrated graphics are from AMD, it completely nullifies the low into mid range graphics card market. I'll throw a graph on screen now from videocards.com linked down below. It shows the 890M integrated graphics on the new Ryzen AI 3000 laptop chips outperforming real dedicated graphics from a actual gaming laptop. The 1650 Ti Max-Q, while not the most powerful laptop graphics card, is actually still pretty decent. And the 890M is able to actually outperform it by 2%, but that is just seriously impressive. Comparing the 890M to the last generation 780M, which is what is inside the Z1 Extreme, the original Ally, the current RG Ally X uses the 780M graphics, it is a whopping 30% increase in performance. That is a tangible, real world, next generation increase in performance. That is jumping from 720p low medium settings all the way up to 1080p high medium settings for certain games. And it gets real interesting when you start increasing the power. Most of these Ryzen AI chips haven't been released in their full you know, power capacity, mostly in thin and light laptops. So we won't be able to see for a little bit longer what a fully unleashed 890M could do. But at the 45 and 20 watt power states, it is still an incredible increase in performance. It remains to be seen what low wattage performance may look like, but the A90M competes with an even old, granted very old, desktop card, the GeForce GTX Titan X, which if I'm remembering correctly is a Kepler based, basically RTX 90 if you want to think about it in like modern terms, it is like the 90 class card of its day, and the Titan X was a behemoth. It sucked back almost 250 watts of power, and it's getting outperformed by integrated graphics. Granted, that was almost 10 years old now, but it is just impressive to see how far we have come. And you might have noticed that even a desktop 1650Ti only outperforms the 890M by 6%, which honestly is insane. And all this performance is thanks to the increase in compute units. Compute units are basically the cores on the processor that are dedicated for gaming performance effectively. Very much layman's terms, comment down below, I am aware that this is a gross oversimplification, but think of CUs as where the graphics power comes from, and the number of those almost directly reflects how much performance you're going to have. Especially at this scale of processor and performance, any amount of compute units matter, which is what CUs stand for. And as you will see on this chart that also is from videocards.com, link down below, shows that the 890M, the 780M, and 680M may seem ra rather similar. But you might notice the 890M has RDNA 3.5 graphics, which is in basically a half generation step forward for the RDNA sort of architecture. And you also might notice it has four more compute units and it comes at a whopping 5.9 teraflops. It is super impressive. The Nintendo Switch 2 is only speculated to be around four, 
which means next generation handhelds might already be more powerful than what the Switch 2 will provide. Which, I could have guessed, but considering that processor in the Switch 2 is speculated to be very similar to the RTX 2050, it doesn't take much to beat that, so I'm not entirely impressed. But the 16 compute units matters quite a bit because this is the first sizable increase in compute units we've seen in quite a while because the 680M is a fairly old processor and they've maintained the status quo for the last couple generations. Even the slightly lower end 880M will also have the same 16 compute units, but at slightly less memory bandwidth and slightly less in the gigahertz speeds and stuff like that, and slightly less teraflops, but still should be plenty powerful. These processors in their recent release is the whole reason why I have a hard time recommending any half new handheld right now, unless you're buying one incredibly used or at like an incredibly killer deal or sale price. Because next generation handhelds are coming very soon. I can't say when because I have no idea. But with how new these processes are, I would expect to see the next next generation handheld early next year to mid next year because these processors are so amazing. I would start expecting at least in the next six months or so to see some sort of announcement from AMD talking about the Z1 Extreme 2 or the Z2 Extreme, whatever they want to call it, because what they did with the original Z1 Extreme is basically take a AMD standard laptop processor, give it a fancy name, and throw it into these gaming handhelds. And technically, the Z1 Extreme is its own thing, just with some special sauce in the driver's department, but there isn't that much of a difference between the Z1 Extreme and the 7740U and the 7840U which is basically what a Z1 Extreme is. And the 8840U is the same exact processor, just with a slightly newer generation CPU architecture, but it uses the same 780M graphics. So any device you might see with 884U graphics processor or whatever they want to phrase it, like you would see in the Zotac zone, I just really wouldn't be that impressed because it should perform basically the same as what we've seen so far except the outstanding performance we see on the RG Ally X is thanks to its incredible memory and all that extra VRAM dedicated to the 780M, which is thoroughly impressive, but utterly underwhelming when compared to the 890M because that is just a generational leap in performance. I seriously can't wait for next generation handhelds because the Steam Deck 2 is probably going to be based on something similar to this. And if that's the case, that's gonna mean incredible performance increases because this isn't even like a jump in performance from you would see the Steam Deck to the Ally. This is amazing and incredible performance jumps that we haven't seen in an incredibly long time in the you know gaming space at least because the difference between a 3090 and a 4090, while good, it's just not as impressive as it used to be. The jump between the 780 and the 980 was enormous. But graphics in overall Moore's Law has slowed down, but this is the first noticeable jump in a long time and it's very impressive. I can't wait to see more details about these processors and how they're going to affect the PC handheld space. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Are you excited about the 890M and what it means for PC handhelds? Are you interested to see how these are implemented in laptops? I would love to hear what you guys think about this down below. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. All the other social media garbage down below. And last but not least, have a wonderful day.